Hi, this is Annette and Phil from Fleet Authority. What are you working on today, Phil? We have a 2004 E350 6.0 diesel, and it's a no start. It's towed in, and uh, we're going through the quick check diagnostic. There's Elijah. Hi, Elijah. So, we did a previous video with the fuel computer and looking at the uh, output voltage of the fuel computer it needs to put out in the range of 48 volts to drive the solenoids on the injectors so for all diesels or v8 power stroke diesels or, or this vehicle this particular power stroke diesel it applies to other power strokes but this one in particular so we go to that and what's this tool this is a scanner it's a snap on solace edge okay now I'm inside the fuel computer the battery voltage going in is 11.5 that's correct it's, can't see it I'm going to move this down then you can ah, see 11.5 11 11 okay it's a 12 volt system so it's sucking voltage turning on this computer so turning on the fuel computer so the output of the fuel computer is 48 spot on. So we're good there. The fuel computer is doing what it's supposed to. There you can see the readings. Yeah, the next thing we'd look for is sync. But right now we're not looking for that. Now the next step is going to the injector control pressure. And that needs to be around 800 to 1,000 PSI to start the truck. And then okay. it varies from... 1500 up to about 4000 psi depending on power demand. Okay. So we're going to that next. And I don't know if it's in the screen, it is. So I'm going to have to. Can you see these? Yes. This DSD is desired pressure. When he cranks it, it'll come up and tell you what the computer's looking for. Okay. And then the ICP pressure, PSI, is, is what's in there. There's a little residual pressure sitting floating around about 5 PSI. Okay. So I'm going to have him crank it. And he's to watch it while he cranks it. So there's our desired. There's our... Let me put this up now. On top of that white line is well done. Go ahead. Here we go. Desired is 1280 and it's barely making 50. Of 80 and actual is 90. You just got to keep this more like it's really straight. There you go. Okay. Go. Okay. I don't want to burn the starter up. Okay. <laughs> so I saw did you, IC, did you see? ICP was 12 something and then. That was desired and the actual was somewhere around 90, I think. Yeah. Okay. Good? So that's indicating. That that part's a problem. Yes. Either the pump's not making enough pressure or the regulator is bad. Probably the regulator is bad. This is an early model. It doesn't have a heat shield on the regulator. We can see that. So we're going to take the regulator out. It's tucked up in within the exhaust piping for the turbocharger. So there's a lot of heat there and it tends to make the regulator go bad. So we're going to put a new regulator in it, we're going to get a heat shield from Ford and wrap it in that. And then we'll give it a try I'm again? We're going to put a new sensor in it for the computer that senses that control pressure. We'll put them in in pairs and when we get to that point and then we'll bring you back and you can watch the pressures and see how it starts. Okay. So this is where your IPR would be, right tucked up in there. The IPR. It's that guy right there. She could put an arrow on it, maybe. Okay. It's got a sensor going into it. Connector. Connector right there in the back of it. Are we running? We are. This is a new regulator. It screws in and there's your solenoid ports to control the high pressure in the injector oil pressure system. This mounts down inside. Uh, Elijah was trying to show you and or to show it. 
And the old one is very, very dark, looks pretty burnt. Early on, they didn't put a wrap on these to protect them from heat. There's some metal heat shields around the exhaust pipe. It wasn't enough. For, on the later models, they put a heat shield wrap. So we ordered one, and it looks like this. Okay. Um, it goes on kind of like that. It snaps in place. Interesting. Tucks in and kind of gives it extra heat protection. Can't really put it in until you've installed the regulator, but that's the part. And there's a. Oh, I just dropped it. I'll cut a, that. There's a part number from Ford. Uh, I've got too much glare. There we go. It's probably fifteen or twenty dollars order for this heat shield. For the okay. shield, yeah, it does not come with the regulator. So this one doesn't even have one. So we're going to add that. And then in another part of the engine, there's a sensor that monitors the pressure that I, the high pressure system's making and tells the computer what the, sent, what the pressure is. These sensors go faulty too. These are rather expensive. They're probably $400 for the sensor uh, at retail. And it, uh, it's very important because it tells the computer what the demand is and what the pressure response is and, and then the computer adjusts this regulator accordingly. So either one of these is acting, you know, given problems, you either lose power or you end up with a no-start, and this has gone to a no-start situation. So we replace these in pairs, the sensor and the regulator and a heat shield. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hey, we've installed our ICP regulator and sensor, put a nice little heat shield around the regulator, and now we're ready to start it up. So we're looking for ICP pressure at startup and then to see how fast it comes up and if we have enough to start the truck. So, I'll bring you back to, there's our desired ICP, injector control pressure. Once I start cranking, the desired will come up, it'll, it's what the computer is looking for, and then the next one down, ICP pressure, is, is actual. Once it gets up enough to start, it's going to start. So, I'm going to crank, Let's see if we fix this truck. Okay. Probably still got to work some air out of it, but we'll give it another go. There she goes. So now, desired what the computer's looking for at idle is eight, close to 900. And what we actually have is being monitored and regulated almost spot on. So, we've done it well. The truck starts nicely. Um, just for the video, I'm going to rev it up. You can see what kind of pressure this thing makes. When it gets under demand, with the kind of pressure it takes to keep the injectors open, watch right above my finger. You see, just sitting here, probably 2,000 RPM, we're making almost 3,000 PSI. And that'll go up as the demand goes up. So it's working properly, it's tracking, it's being regulated properly, so this one is considered good. So if you like this video, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button, we'll send you links to our new videos as we go, and you can look us up on Facebook.